The new state report says about 110,000 Californians moved out of the state last year. As KCRA 3 Sharkina Shams reports, the numbers tell a story about jobs and the economy. Its population grew at more than double the national average until 1990. Then something changed. Last decade, two million more Americans moved out of California than moved in. A new state report says more people left California last year than the number who came in, a net loss of about 14,000 people. Between 2001 and 2009, almost 650 Californians migrated to states like Oregon, Arizona, Texas, Nevada. Your special reports have looked at businesses, but what about just population numbers? California has always been seen as a magnet, people moving here from other states. Is that still happening? Actually, the opposite is now true, where uh, California has net exported close to 100,000 people. Most of them moved in, according to uh, the latest census figures, the prime destination is Texas. It may be a state of stunning beauty and wonderful weather, but people are still leaving California in droves. Some three and a half million residents deserting this state in the last 30 years. But why are people fleeing California? There are several reasons. The first being that liberal control means a big over-regulating government. California will probably go broke. California, California is broke. It's not only broke, it's broken. Liberals broke it. Nobody can argue, no one, no one with a shred of commitment to honesty can argue conservatives broke California. Liberal policies in a state where they can do whatever they want have broken the, 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 the golden state, the state people went to to get rich. You now go there to get poor. You leave to get rich. It's, it's California arrogance, right? It's, 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 it's what draws people to California in the first place is this sense that nothing is really real here and that's okay. Uh, I'll just close by saying this. Typical of the California attitude is, I got into a brief debate with a woman who was a Democratic council, local, local, local council person in, in Irvine, California. And she was saying, well, if because if, we got in the middle of this, she said, if Republicans are really so great, how come California's uh, you know, doing so well? California's the seventh biggest economy in the world, and it's run by Democrats. And I said, it is the seventh biggest economy in the world. And before the Democrats got a hold of it, it was the fifth biggest economy in the world. <laughs> and, and, it, and it takes a while to bleed out that much prosperity, but yeah. they're doing it. Everybody's leaving. Boeing uh, left Washington for the same kind of reasons. Um, we are the poorest state in the nation. By any reasonable accounting of, of assets and liabilities, California's the poorest state in the union. Debt is unbelievable. And nobody wants to look at the, the, the red ink on the, on the spreadsheet. All they do is look at the black ink. And so more and more red ink builds up, and sooner or later, they're going to pay. We're going to pay. And what's happening is that because of high taxes, big regulations, uh, unhealthy lawsuit climate, and a lot of government spending, People are leaving the state. In just this century, Texas has created more than a million new jobs. California has lost more than half a million. From 2004 to 2010, 680,000 people moved from other states to Texas, a whopping 185,000 of them California. Meanwhile, many California companies are thinning their ranks. Chevron is moving 800 jobs from their Bay Area headquarters to Texas. Waste Connection shifted more than 100 jobs to Texas from Folsom. And other California firms are also on the move. While the Golden State taxes and regulates companies near to death. For example, the average small business in California is hit for about $134,000 per year in compliance costs to comply with the regulations in the state of California. Dozens of companies are considering packing up and leaving. Dozens already have. Even as we've been here in California for a couple of days, we've heard about more businesses pulling up stakes right now. The legislature passes, on average, around 900 bills a year. Laws. Here you go, Governor. Nine, three a day, or even four a day when they're in session. And the kind of laws that they're passing in California, they're saying you can't, as a parent, hire a psychiatrist to try to make your kid not gay. I mean, it's that level of crazy specificity. Uh, increasing the, the penalties, the fines, for throwing citrus onto a minor league baseball field. Seriously, that was a law passed a couple I mean, when the city council of San Francisco proposes to ban goldfish you know you have an intrusive situation. Uh, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that people have too much space in their houses, and we could just share our space with other family members. We would reduce our housing needs right there. And uh, I think the number of housing units needed is a lot less than people think. 
because the, the old standard for housing is basically circa 1980, when people all lived in their own independent uh, apartments or independent housing units. There was no doubling up at that time. And that's probably not, never going to be seen again in America. We're always going to be, uh, uh, well, you know, we're, we have assimilation going on in, in uh, L.A. right now. You know, assimilation is a two-way street. And so we're all living to live like Asians with multi-generational families. That, that's, that's, that's the American way now. <laughs> in Texas, Texas is just a wonderful state. It's a wonderful state. We went to uh, a little town in the middle of nowhere and we were talking with some of the people there and they were talking about how they were basically just able to build their houses without any state permitting, without any local permitting. They just go out and build a house. Like, that's America, man. I mean, that's awesome. In California, you have to get a permit to retile your bathroom. I mean, legitimately, you have to get a permit to retile your bathroom in my house. A good example is if you want to build a strip mall. It takes, just to get permission to break ground and start construction, it takes four to five months on average in Texas. It takes four to five years on average in California. And that's one of the things that helps drive up the cost of housing and business complexes and factories in California. Companies leave for three primary reasons, high taxes, excessive regulations, and the threat of, of really ridiculous lawsuits. And they are leaving for places like Arizona, a state that means business. Arizona's fast track permitting allows certified architects and engineers in Phoenix to get building permits in a single day. By contrast, Dwayne Woods will tell you that California's process is painfully slow. As the former executive at Waste Management, the largest recycling company in the world, Woods moved his regional headquarters from California to Arizona. We started trying to permit a major recycling facility in, in L.A. Uh, at an old landfill site, mind you. Uh, that site is still not permitted to this day. How long has that taken? Over 10 years. And after a decade, there is still no facility in California. Yet it took just two years to build the same plant in Arizona. If you took a whiteboard and said, how can we make it difficult? How many agencies can we layer on? Uh, you know, California's as complex as it could be. It's not an employer-friendly state uh, to that. And it's, uh, to that end, it's more difficult, definitely more costly to operate in. Of all states, California ranks dead last for policy friendliness with key negatives for high high taxes, high workers' compensation costs, and high electricity costs. All the green policies, essentially, renewable mandates. Uh, renewable mandates are for solar and wind, wind and other things which are higher cost. And because California's imposed that on, on their energy uh, industries, costs are higher in California than in Texas. Is that, That's right, is about 50% that higher in California. 50% higher. Yeah, and, and they're going up. That's the scary thing, is that they could go up even more. Government at the state and local level consumes about a third more of the economy in California than it does in Texas. And that, with that extra government, you have things like one third of the nation's welfare recipients are in California, even though they only have one eighth of the population. You have more regulations, more taxes, everything. We have a graph of the, the welfare recipients, the percentage of households receiving public assistance. Uh, much higher in California than, than the U.S. average and lower than average in Texas. What you see is that the state with the highest poverty rate in the nation is California, higher even than the District of Columbia. And, and that should really be a warning or a caution to progressives who maintain that this big government model is really uh, the path to prosperity. We argue that it's entirely the opposite, that in fact Texas is a model for how America could be better run and there could be more prosperity by having less government. California's had over 10% uh, unemployment every month of Barack Obama's presidency until basically last November. And um, it's still 3% higher than Texas. Yes, and it's, it's been higher in California than the national average every month since 1990. There's been more job growth in Texas. Texas gained in the past 10 years more than a million jobs. California lost about half a million jobs. But the Brown administration denies that California is bleeding jobs to other states. Texas Governor Rick Perry taking a victory lap this week after Toyota announced it will move its national headquarters and thousands of jobs to the Lone Star State after 30 years in California. It's a big win for the governor who has made it his mission to lure companies away from high tax, high regulation states. California Governor Jerry Brown, who's up for re-election this November, had this to say about the automaker's move. We got a few problems. We have lots of little burdens and regulations and taxes. 
but smart people figure out how to make it. Is that the yeah. Los Angeles City Council members are paid $178,000 per year? They are the highest paid legislative body in the nation, John. Uh, you know, uh, we just had a councilwoman uh, that uh, Janice Hahn went to Congress, the House of Representatives, and she has to take a cut in pay. They make more money than United States senators for a Los Angeles City Council. Los Angeles, each councilman is given a car? They get a car that has a license plate that says exempt, so they can park in meters and they don't get tickets. $178,000 per year in Los Angeles versus in Dallas, $37,000, San Antonio, $1,400. California is not a right to work state. They have very powerful unions, especially government unions. They are to spend millions and millions of dollars to promote bigger government and higher taxes. Four California cities have now declared bankruptcy. Stockton, the biggest, and San Bernardino. The result isn't pretty. Some 50-year-old retirees were promised they can collect forever. Well, until they die, uh, but actually after that too, because their spouse may collect after they die, and the money just isn't there. Politicians promised them much more money than the town had. So, do the people in San Bernardino realize that's the reason the town went belly up? No. One union blamed the mayor and former city manager that for spending money on a downtown movie theater. Yeah, the movie theater is nice, but it's nothing compared to the $45.8 million deficit that the city of San Bernardino is running. And by the way, when they filed for bankruptcy, they had $150,000 in the city in the bank, bank account. The uh, San Bernardino politicians said, we didn't see it coming. How could they? They owed $46 million. They had 100000 in the bank. Yes, and, and they have payments that they're required to pay into CalPERS, $1.8 million a month. And they didn't see that coming with 150 k in the bank. Nothing's going to cover these pension obligations, not in San Bernardino, not in Stockton, not in Vallejo, not in Compton, not in any of these other cities in California that are simply failing. California's also going bankrupt. $167 billion in debt. Are you kidding me? That is grossly irresponsible for a state with as many natural resources as California. I mean, these pinheads in Sacramento think they can just spend money and other people have to pick up the tab. Tough times in Stockton, California, with that city, the largest one ever to file for bankruptcy. And city officials are saying it was tough, but necessary. Stockton is one of three cities now to declare bankruptcy in the state. According to Vice Mayor Kathy Miller, public safety employees were costing the city, on average, more than $150,000 each per year. You, uh, we, we heard about that hefty uh, benefit package there and uh, for those em employees. How did it get to that point where they were able to collect so much? You know, it happened uh, incrementally over um, about a 10-year period and uh, during the 1990s. And Stockton's not alone in this. Cities all across our state, especially, um, really ramped up um, enhanced pensions and, uh, and increased benefits. And one of the benefits that Stockton granted to its employees, which ended up really being um, the largest single problem that we have financially, is we granted uh, free lifetime medical benefits to our retiree. Wow. The mayor of Stockton, who owns this balloon shop, thinks her city and her country will find a way out of their current malaise. I ha think we have a good future. I think we're still figuring out how we play that future, what role we have, and how we resume again our prominence in innovation and manufacturing and a lot of those industries. It's a matter of evaluating who we want to be when we grow up. California owes an astounding $167 billion, and it's running an annual deficit of about $9 billion, money that can never, never be paid back. And what is California getting for all that? High school graduation rate, 37 out of 50 states. Businesswoman Lana Zweigart decided that placing her son in a crowded high school where many students do not speak English was simply not an option. Rather than pay the high tuition costs of a private school, Zweigart decided it was time to move her family and her company out of California. Her story is the story of middle-class Californians and business owners that have simply had enough of the declining quality of life and no longer have any faith that Sacramento and Washington will act to secure the border and protect American citizens. I've been in California for 31 years. 
I have two children and I have progressively felt the decline of where I live within my business, within my family. Well, Pomona, when I first moved in, was a wonderful little small community, very family orientated. I can't go there any longer. With my surroundings of being um, bombarded by illegal immigration, the schools, they're catering to the illegals. Again, I think the primary message is that it is the obligation and mission of our public schools to educate all children uh, regardless Not of illegals. American immigration folks. status. This is Not illegals. Right. Uh, these children have a right uh, to no. an education. Particularly the border crossing is dear to our heart. We have just recently found a few projects specific addressing on the border crossing and to reduce the waiting time as cars coming in and to reduce the pollution. What? And we should uh, ask for next question, please. We would like to give the opportunity to the LA downtown office. They're letting people cross faster. Questions. Communities that are sometimes threatened or intimidated by giving comment in a language that isn't as comfortable to them. So. Este foro va a ser en español y en inglés. En español vamos a hablar y en inglés. For in English, it's going to be in your headset. So this forum is in Spanish and in English. In English, in your headsets, in Spanish, we're going to be uh, speaking on the microphone. We live in America. It should be in more people here speak English and Spanish! Hey, one of the primary reasons that I'm taking my family out of here is because of the public school system. And if I would have had to send my children to their neighborhood schools, we would have had to speak Spanish in order for him to go there. When we get things from the school district, it comes in Spanish. I speak English, I want things in English, and I demanded that our school not cater to Spanish speaking. They have to learn English. She's called for upping the top tax brackets in America to 80% or more. The, the wealthiest 1%, I would but like to on, tax them at higher salary. rates across the board on okay. their salary, on their investments, and also on what they're passing to the future future generation. Yeah, well, they just passed by a ballot initiative one of the largest uh, tax increases in history. Tax the rich. They've increased taxes by $50 billion. So, yes, yeah, suddenly it's going to look a lot more balanced there. But they're also lying. I mean, they're talking about uh, uh, revenue projections that will not come true. It's an annual tradition in California. Your budget looks balanced in January when you propose it. And then when the revenues actually start coming in, you say, oh, there's a shortfall. And that shortfall could be $8 billion. It has been as high as $30 billion in recent years. We'll see that happen again. So uh, clearly, California has serious economic problems. The state has the lowest credit rating of any other state. It's falling deeper into debt. So is this just a reality that they need to face, that deep cuts need to be made because they can no longer spend beyond its means? We should be getting a more equitable system of taxation and taxing the wealthier at rates that are commensurate with other states. We need to be able to raise revenue uh, in an equitable fashion in the state. Californians actually pay a lower tax um, base than most other states. Where the top marginal tax rate in California is what? 13.3 percent. And in Texas? Zero. Zero. <laughs> That would seem to be That's a different <laughs> That's even, that'll even get major, but that'll even get Freeman's attention. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'll get anyone's attention. And California has had an issue with its revenue uh, that is raising enough revenue to provide the services that Californians need.